Good afternoon. It's Terrapin Tuesday. We're on the President's Suite level here at Maryland Stadium. Coming off a loss to Penn State. Road doesn't get any easier from here. I'm Wayne Viner. Bruce is away from the microphone today. Look, Terps going to number eight Michigan State. That means you face Kenneth Walker. He's got 1,340 yards. Quarterback's done pretty well for them. Peyton Thorne, he's a redshirt sophomore. Uh, Jaden Reed, about 40 catches. They're a formidable team. They win the games. They lost to Purdue last week, and that sort of bursts their bubble, but they're still number eight in the country. Maryland, five and four now. Six and four would have been, a, six and three would have been a lot better. But we'll take the five and four. You got Michigan State, Michigan here in College Park, and then at Rutgers, you need to win one game. And we've talked to today uh, the players that came out for Media Day, including Leah and Corey Deitches, about what's it mean to get that sixth win. Of course, they're all looking forward to it, and so are we as Maryland fans to get to a bowl. It's been a few years. I think Maryland's going to get it done. They're going to find the sixth win, six and six, still a successful season. You have to take a look back at that game and realize, and I talked to Todd Carton yesterday at length about this, that Penn State, and this is more Todd's position, Penn State had the eighth-ranked defense in the country. They shut you down inside the 20. Maryland's two touchdowns were pretty good. I'm still a little upset about the stall outs on the 35 to 38 yard line. I think if you want to win the game, especially if you look at a lot of these pro games, or if you talk to Bruce Posner, he's going to say you got to go for it. You have to try and win the game. The risk is that you don't win the game because you didn't try to win the game when you had the ball. The ball is very important. And Maryland, they're steadfast. They play it their way. They believe that they had that line drawn at the 32, and if the ball didn't cross the 32, they're going to punt it instead of go for it, and especially instead of bringing out Joseph Petrino, the kicker, to try a 50-plus yard field goal. It just wasn't going to happen. Uh, Loxley seems very sure of the way that he played that. It's part of his plan. He wanted to bottle up the Penn State offense. And for most of that game, it almost worked. Still, it was a winnable game, and that's the, the first step. And we've talked on the air on 1300 The Bet, on these YouTube channels, that you don't go from losing 50-3 to three to winning. You go from losing 50-3 to three time and time again to being in the game in the fourth quarter. And then you see the progress as the team finally decides that they know how to win and that you start to win games like you lost here against Penn State. So progression, it's a progression to go from where you are to where you want to be. And there's still a lot of guys out there that are walk-ons, like a Greg Rose. He had a couple sacks. He's a walk-on. There were plays made at linebacker by guys who were wide receivers before. It's still a work in progress. A lot of the young guys are still very young. And it's been an increasing trend over the past few years, and especially this year, that older teams win more games. And Maryland is not that old a team yet. Still actually a relatively young team. We'll be back to talk about Leah's performance and about what the defense could have done that they didn't as Jahan Dodson rolls up 247 yards in the Maryland secondary. I'm Wayne Viner. We'll be back in College Park in a moment. Network solutions, managed IT, and technical support. Viner Forgates makes your company work. Three, two, one. So Leah, some people had him as a Heisman hopeful. He's played 10 games as the Maryland quarterback over the two years. And they haven't won that many games, but you can see that it's coming. Now I asked him 
you watch the Leah interview, about a couple of passes that he threw that just were out of the reach of the Penn State defender going over their heads and into the hands of the Maryland wide receiver. Those plays show you the progression that he's making. He's starting to figure out how to fit the ball into the spaces he has to throw, not just between the receivers and the defensive backs, but over the front of a zone into the receiver's hands, catching that before the safeties get to him or the dropping corners in quarters coverage. It's Some of those throws are actually impressive. So how do you rate how good a quarterback is if they're not winning? Well, got a couple notes here. Talia completed 41 passes against Penn State. That is the second most completions in the game in school history. That's hard to believe, but Scott Milanovic had 46 against Florida State one year. That's the top two. Um, Leah has 2,755 passing yards. It's third all time in the season. He's played 10 games. You got to remember this. He's just 744 yards behind Scott Milanovic. There's a good chance that Talia Tagiovola will be the all time season passer in this year. That's not bad. Maryland's played football for a long time. It's been over 100 years, it's been over 125 years. This kid could have the most passing yards in a season. And he's only 47 short of the total completions record set by John Kaleo back in 1992. The kid is destined for the Maryland record books. This is a very impressive thing. No, he doesn't jump out at you as a, a, a big leader with a, a big brash statements. He's a very quiet kid. He seems very confident. He certainly has a lot of faith, and he would tell you if he were here, it starts with a faith in God and a faith that he can make this happen and that he's in the right place with the right people, including Mike Loxley and Dan Enos. And he and his family both really trust and like these Maryland coaches. The numbers, I guess, have to speak for themselves. Uh, Leah has been above average, but when you're touted as a Heisman hopeful after a game or two, and then Maryland just doesn't, doesn't perform as well as you'd like, so it takes some of the luster off of this. But when you look back in the record books, you're going to say, hey, that season that we saw out of a kid who's only played just his 10th game, that's very, very impressive. And it probably portends very good things to come. Now, let's go to some of the things that weren't so great. Maryland, between their zone and their man coverage, against Penn State, let the one guy who could beat them, Jahan Dodson, beat them. Uh, didn't see a lot of changes. I didn't see doubling. I uh, didn't see zones rolling towards Dotson. I didn't see that the defense actively tried to take anything away. And, and speaking with others, they said, why didn't Tarheeb still have a few more turns on him instead of just Jacorian Bennett? I don't know. I do know the philosophy is Maryland plays tough man-to-man -man defense. They did manage to hold Penn State to 2.2 yards a carry, but they gave up over, I think it was about 400 yards passing to Sean Clifford and 247 of those to Jahan Dotson. I would have liked to have seen more flexibility. I would have liked to have seen more physical play on Jahan, try to throw him off the routes, uh, make it more of a hockey game than a football game if you have to, bump him, bump him, just dis disrupt what he's trying to do Maryland wasn't able to do it. So you've got a game on Saturday. Again, at number eight. Maryland has played Michigan State pretty tough over the years. Uh, not a lot of wins. I remember one win here uh, early in uh, Maryland's tenure in the Big Ten. But Maryland has been in games against Michigan State. Yeah, it'd be a huge upset to win the game. So I'm going to go back to the fundamentals. Be in the game in the fourth quarter. Make that two weeks in a row that you've kept the Maryland fan base watching, thinking maybe this time, maybe tonight, we're going to get that win that's eluded us. Michigan comes in here. Mason thinks Maryland's going to beat Michigan. And then we're at Rutgers. And for those who don't have really solid Thanksgiving plans, see if you can make a trip up to Rutgers and support this team. I, I think they'll be in the search of the sixth win. I think you can get it at Rutgers. Six wins in a bowl game makes us a success. Don't lose track of where we're coming from and where we're going. A couple more good recruiting classes, 
build on these wins, get to a bowl game this year. You've got a record-setting quarterback who, depending on this goes, would have played 14 games in his career, and he's still got two seasons left if he wants to stay in College Park. Maybe, just maybe, we're looking at the start of something special here in College Park. I'm Wayne Viner for Red Turtle and Turp Talk, bidding you a good afternoon from College Park. We'll see you after the Maryland Knippiak basketball game live on the court as basketball season kicks off tonight.